Afternoon Matanistas, you're probably in this compressed football season expecting yet another football vlog, but I've been on my wonders again and today I'm going to take you on a little culinary tour of a place that I've not actually been to before and to discover a cuisine that I am not at all familiar with. So welcome to today's vlog from Wrocław in Poland. A lot of people in the UK have either no opinion or a negative opinion about Polish food. They think, oh, the cuisine from this part of the world, it's a bit bland. I have been to Poland before and I have found some nice things to eat. Having said that, I can't say I know what I'm doing here, but thankfully I have a friend here with me who does. My friend Jonathan, who now lives in London, used to live here, so thankfully he's going to take me somewhere for some Polish traditional food. But first, I want to ask him why the buildings are so beautifully kept in this city and why the architecture is really rather stunning. Hello everyone. The buildings here were obviously severely destroyed during World War II, but they've been rebuilt in an older style and as you will see in a minute on the main square look really quite stunning so Well, we're now entering the main square and the one place I've seen a bit of before in Poland is Gdansk. And when I was taken around the town centre there, the people guiding me told me that in the war, when the Germans came over east, the buildings, the old buildings remained intact. When the Russians came over at the end of the war, everything got flattened in the battle. And it's been rebuilt in a very similar style to the centre of Roslov. Anyway, I'm sure you've had enough historical waffle from me. I know you're all here for the food, really. Let's go mutton it up and have another fairly moderate lunch. So it wasn't very far for us to walk to today's restaurant called Chapka Polish Kitchen. And don't worry, yes, they do have a menu in English because for all my linguistic ability, I don't know a word of Polish. Okay, so a fairly extensive menu here, and I haven't a clue what to order, but for you Muttonistas, of course, I will over-order so that we get a good selection on the table. And it seems that dumplings are a bit of a feature here, and quite a lot of pork on the menu as well. I've had Russian-style dumplings, Chinese-style ones, Thai ones, Georgian ones even. I think we're going to have to try them here and see if they're any different. After a little consultation with the waitress, we have decided what we're going to eat. And I'll pan down to the menu because it's very hard for me to describe otherwise because I won't remember what they are. So we are going to start off with this Zurich fermented rye flour soup. The taxi driver coming in from the airport recommended that. And other Polish people I've spoken to keep going on about this soup as well. We are going for the Hungarian style potato pancakes. We are having the bandit dumplings in mushroom sauce. Now I asked what a bandit dumpling was and it's got meat in and it's a little bit spicy apparently which surprises me because I thought Polish food wasn't supposed to be at all spicy. And then finally we've gone for a Polish classic, the pork knuckle in beer which is a dish which I think I've heard of before. 
I've had Alsace and German style pork knuckle in mustard, so let's see how the Polish variety is different and whether it's any better or not. And of course, given we're at a traditional restaurant, I couldn't really go around drinking wine because it's not exactly traditional over here. So I've gone for a beer instead. And for those of you saying, oh, you know, they drink a lot of vodka over there, it's not my thing necking white spirits, so cheers anyway. The first dish has arrived, it is the Zurich soup. And it doesn't look at all familiar to me, but all the Poles say their soups are some of the best. So let's get stuck in and see whether that's the truth or just nationalistic pride. Well, that's pretty good. Hearty broth filled with potatoes, boiled egg, sausage, amongst other things. And the smokiness of the sausage really does come out. I must admit, I prefer a cold gazpacho, but for this style of soup, which I don't take very often, it's actually pretty good. That was a jolly good start to the meal. We split the bowl in half since we're having a lot of dishes, which is about right, not too filling. The next dish is about to arrive, so we'd better have a quick slurp in preparation for its arrival. So two dishes have arrived at once. Now, we did order the dumplings in mushroom sauce, but she said risky, so I'm assuming those are the cream cheese dumplings. OK, so it's like misunderstanding. We seem to have accidentally doubled up on the dumplings. Oh, well, we're going to have to deal with that. The waitress thought we wanted the cheese dumplings as well as the mushroom dumplings. We only wanted the mushrooms, but the cheese have come as well. But we'll mow through those anyway. There might be something other than cheese inside these, but we'll have to wait and see. And then we have the meat dumplings with the mushroom sauce. And the potato cakes with Hungarian goulash. Okay, let's try the Russian-style dumplings first. Tasty, but extremely heavy. And if we get through all of those, we won't be touching that knuckle of pork later. Let's dunk that in the mushroom sauce. Or maybe we were supposed to pour the mushroom sauce over the entirety of the dumplings. This one I prefer. The waitress was right about the spice. Very, very light spice, so seasoned muttonistas who visit Asian restaurants shouldn't have any problem whatsoever dealing with these. And it's accompanied with quite a creamy mushroom sauce which is fairly light for this style of sauce and doesn't overpower the dumpling itself. Here we are, the potato cake. We've loaded it up with sauce and sour cream, as one does in this part of the world. Yeah, that I really like. Generous use of paprika, as you'd expect in a goulash very nicely cooked not overcooked crisp potato cakes and the sour cream really does lend contrast to the paprika sauce now i'd better try the meat of course as well oh my goodness mm. the pork is just standard slow cooked pork it's not like a prime iberian cut or anything like that but then again in a stew like goulash neither is it supposed to be now, I thought we'd go a bit heavy on the ordering, just so that we got a bit of variety on the table, but it transpires that I've gone way over the top here and we now have received enough food to feed an army. Let me show you. And I give you one kilogram of pork knuckle. I think it's called golomko or something like that. And we have some sort of sauerkraut preparation on the side and some roasted potatoes. I'll tell you about the sauces in a minute because I don't know what they are. Right, it's sauce investigation time. Now I'm guessing the first sauce is mustard related. Uh, yeah, it's just mustard I think actually, yeah, just mustard. And I think the other one might be horseradish. Right you are again, Mutton. Well, we'd better start carving and making an inroad into that massive joint. So, let's start making a dent into it. I'm more of a mustard man than a horseradish man. 
Mmm. Crispy, fatty, juicy pork. Now for the cabbage. Now that is not what I was expecting at all. I quite like that actually. It's in a light tomato sauce with cumin added. I thought I was going to get sauerkraut or something fermented. But obviously the chef's been a little creative here and it's lovely. And finally the potato. And I guess Polish chefs should be expert potato cookers since it's a staple of the Polish diet. Nicely done, slightly crisp on the outside, more of the texture of a boiled potato on the inside and not overcooked. And for those of you who don't eat pork or haven't seen knuckle of pork on a menu before, because it is a Central and Eastern European thing, not a Western European thing, the closest thing to it with another meat that I can compare it to is a lamb shank. Well, we'd better crack on with this and try and get through as much of it as possible. I'm relying on Johnny to do a sterling job here and tuck lots of this away, but he's making a good job at carving at the moment, which is important with a dish like this. So Johnny has carved away, and you can see here how you've got some lean cuts in the middle and the crispy fat on the outside. And it goes without saying, I'm going to seek out some of those fatty bits because you know me, fat adds flavour. Anyway, this is going to be tough work, so I'd better take another quick slurp, try and mow through this, and I'll see you after we've finished as much of it as we can. Well, we have to admit defeat. We couldn't manage that massive pork knuckle between the two of us, but we did make a sizable dent into it. Of course, this one was beer marinated, and the ones I've had before have been in mustard, but this was pretty nice. And as I said earlier, I really loved that cabbage. And I would say portion size, that between two with a bowl of soup each would be a hearty lunch in itself so we've gone way overboard here on channel prime mutton never happens does it and i'd also say the dumplings are rather heavy the ones with mushrooms were delicious actually the ones with cheese were okay but eating a few of those catches up with you 20 minutes later i'd even say i am so stuffed i couldn't even manage a wafer thin mint but i will try their espresso out and Segafredo I like, but it looks a little long for a double espresso, but let's see how it tastes. And it's entirely possible that I've carved and should have omitted the word double when I ordered. Yeah, so it's, it's come out like a strong, long coffee rather than espresso, so I think I'm coming to the view that maybe in Poland I should play it safe by ordering a single espresso, and if I want more, ordering another one on top of that. Well, Matanistas, time to wrap the video up. That meal was so heavy, I couldn't even manage a wafer thin mint afterwards. And to walk it off, we headed to the double-spired cathedral, if you can see that on the other side of the river in Ruslav. That meal cost £50 between the two of us, and to be honest, there was enough for four there. A few bits and bobs more, and you could all have a great meal for £15 at that restaurant. And a big thanks to Jonathan, who used to live here, who showed me around, and he picked a corking place to dry traditional food, so goodbye from John. Bye. And I'm going to have to love you and leave you as well, folks. Until the next video, keep liking, keep sharing, keep subscribing. And above all, don't forget, you can't beat a bit of mutton.